So, Sonic the Hedgehog. Another video game film. Now, um... Now, I grew up with, with the Sega Genesis, you know, I, I was very familiar with the Sonic games, so you'd think I'd have uh, quite a bit of an attachment to this. But the thing is, like, Sonic hasn't really left, at least consoles, like, it never seems to have stopped becoming a... It, it doesn't seem to have stopped becoming, you know, like a, like a gaming icon, like, there's been many Sonic games over the years. And it still has a, a big fan base, and Sega's still behind this, this iconography of the character. So, uh, yeah, so now we're at the Sonic the Hedgehog movie. And, uh, you know, video game films have always had this, uh, you know, they, they haven't had a good history, obviously. Uh, people keep referring to, like, the video game curse. Um, but the thing is, like, video game films have kind of gotten over that curse for a while now. I mean, like, in terms of, like, box office, you know, even going so far back as, like, Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat was... A bit of a box office success. And then you had the Resident Evil films; they did well, uh, even critically. I mean, just last year we had the Angry Birds two, um, which I believe have a fairly high uh, Rotten Tomato score. That and Detective Pikachu. We've we've got tons of video game films that uh, you know that have kind of like risen from the ranks. So I'm sure you know for a lot of people that they might be able to breathe a little bit of a breath of fresh air that the Sonic the Hedgehog movie, it's not a bad film. It's, it's, it's passable, it, it gets the job done, it doesn't aggravate, it doesn't really bore that much, but uh, it's, it's kind of like last year's Detective Pikachu as well, you know? It's like, it's got some fun stuff in there, it feels fairly faithful to the video games, it doesn't feel like a, a mashing of a whole bunch of material that doesn't quite fit together. It fits together well, but it doesn't really resonate further than that, it's just... I, I get the feeling a lot of people are going to really like this film just for the fact that it's stable. Like, it's a sufficient adventure from beginning to end. You know, it's got some decent chemistry here. The jokes don't... The jokes don't really fall that far flat on their face. They don't go for a lot of easy gags. It's safe. That's kind of the best thing I can say about the film. It's, a, it's just unfortunate that it never really breaks out of that. It, it, that it doesn't really have that extra bit... Um, you know, just like a little bit more like chemistry or character or comedy just to push it a little bit further past a standard, you know, road trip action adventure picture. Um, and it's mainly because there's not a lot to it. Like, we're introduced to uh, Sonic the Hedgehog. He's voiced by uh, Ben Schwartz. Uh, and we first meet him, like, one of the things I would critique about this film, like, I, I generally don't like doing this where I say, like, you know, you should have had different placement here. I would not have opened the film by uh, by just showing Sonic on his home world and having him narrate everything. I kind of like the idea that he's a little bit of a mysterious enigma that not too many people know about, because they kind of go with that for setting him up on Earth. But no, we start with Sonic on uh, on his home planet, um, where he's got kind of like, you know, like the loop-de-loops that he has in, like, you know, the Sonic games. But, uh, but we don't really get a whole lot of character from him. We know that he's fast and he's cocky and he's got a bit of an edge and an attitude to him. We know that he's raised by an owl matriarch who he refers to as Obi-Wan Kenobi. Um, so I get the feeling, okay, so this is kind of going to be a character who inspires him in his journey going forward. Nope. Uh, pretty much everything that goes on in his home planet is mentioned for like three minutes. And then he's immediately transported to Earth so that he can be safe from uh, this evil tribe. We don't figure out who the tribe is, we don't really know much about the owl, we don't even know that much about his home planet, because we kind of drop that talk after that. So with that pointless bit of pathos out of the way, um, we, we later catch up with Sonic as living out in the wilderness um, outside a small town called Green Hills. And basically, he kind of basically stalks the populace um, and kind of adores them from afar. Um, and the one character that he resonates the most with is the local sheriff called uh, Tom, played by James Marsden. And uh, and he kind of has a little bit of a connection to him because James, uh, sorry, Tom is a little little weird. He talks to donuts. Uh, he doesn't really have a whole lot going on in the small town, but he tries to protect what protect it for like what little he can offer. Uh, but he seems fairly good at his job. In fact, he's good enough that he's considering moving out of the small town and taking a bigger job elsewhere. So eventually, 
um, you know, Tom and Sonic connect and Sonic is basically, he's, he's trying to live out in the woods, but then he's compromised. So he's got to find his way to another planet. And that essentially just means going on a road trip. So the two connect from there. Um, but the thing is there, if it, it feels just like kind of expected, like the first time they run into each other, you know, they kind of like, they talk a little bit, but like Tom is pretty much accepting like, okay, I got to get this hedgehog to San Francisco. And I'm not going to question too much of it. Mostly because we really don't question too much of these characters that much. I mean, there's, we feel a little bit for Sonic. I mean, he's he's got like a, you know, he feels a little bit isolated. He feels like he doesn't quite fit in just a little bit because the film doesn't want to take away from this having a light and breezy tone a Sonic having a lot of quips and, and a lot of action scenes, so they don't harp on this too much. But I feel this kind of hinders the character of uh, Dr. Robotnik, um, played by Jim Carrey, and he has discovered that Sonic has um, this, this super speed power that basically is unlimited energy. And Robotnik's whole deal is just that he really likes machines and he hates human beings. And that's about it. That's that's like his entire driving force uh, for wanting to catch Sonic. It's just that he wants to build more machines. It seems like he had a troubled childhood because they briefly mention that he's an orphan, but it's kind of like played up as a joke for like a few scenes. So I'm not really sure if, if it's a true story or not, but uh, it, at, at any rate, his basic character is that he likes machines and he hates people. Uh, he insults his henchmen and he's just a very... He's a literal mustache twirler. He's, he's got like the big curly mustache and just twirls it around and basically just eats scenery. So, you know, to criticize Jim Carrey, Jim Carrey's roles, Dr. Robotnik just saying, like, oh, well, it's just Jim Carrey playing Jim Carrey. He doesn't have much to work with here. <laughs> There's not a lot to Dr. Robotnik as a villain. He, he, he just He's just machine themed. He feels like a secondary villain you would have in, like, a, a group of supervillains as, like, kind of like the lesser one. Like, oh, th this is the villain who does robots and drones and machines. And that's pretty much his whole deal. So I, I can understand why Jim Carrey has to ham it up. And he hams it up hard in this role. He tries to make as many jokes as he can with basically nothing. Like, he's... He's pretty much just turning, like, water into wine at this point, trying to have as much fun with the slapstick and the goofiness and playing up the, the loud and eccentric nature of his character. There's a sequence where he dances around in his laboratory. There's a sequence where he's being appreciative of his henchman, but at the same time screaming at him and punching him, which is kind of funny in, in bits and pieces, but it just keeps coming back to the fact that there's not a lot to this character, and we're really just watching Jim Carrey playing Jim Carrey. In fact, I I would have thought it'd be even more fun if it was just straight up Jim Carrey playing Jim Carrey in the role. Like, not Dr. Robotic, just Jim Carrey decided to get involved with drones. It'd still be pretty damn fun. Uh, the, the, the road trip itself is not too unique in terms of what happens. You know, Tom gets, you know, framed for destruction at one point. Uh, there's a car chase, there's a bar brawl, um, there's, a, there's a meeting up with it, with his wife and his family, uh, where there, there's like a meeting where they're initially shocked by Sonic, but not too shocked. Uh, here's another thing that they don't really go too much into with character. Tom's wife is very supportive, but the thing is she doesn't have much to do. Um, and Tom's uh, wife's sister apparently hates Tom. And wants Tom to get a divorce. Uh, and apparently wants he thinks that uh, his sister should divorce him for reasons that are never explained. I guess it's a joke that sister-in-laws just don't like you marrying their sister. There's not much to that. Like I said, these characters have very little to work with here. Tom is essentially just set up as the likable, nice everyman. Like his few hang-ups about, you know, wanting to ditch his small town and go off to work in the city are not that big because, like, it's understandable. Tom's a nice guy. He doesn't hate the city. He's, I mean, he doesn't hate the small town. He's a little bored with it, but it's understandable why he'd want to go to the city. I mean, his his wife's supportive of it. The community, you know, they, they kind of don't want to see him go, but they understand because they're a likable and quirky bunch. But there's not really 
a big enough reason given to why he should stay. I mean, Sonic tries to make this case a little bit, um, but the thing is, there are so many quirky townspeople, I feel like there should have been more of that so that there's this um, family connection to the small town. So there's more of an arc here. It just feels like, you know, they're just cobbling together these, these small little elements to piece together to make this adventure work, which to its credit, kind of does i mean like the, the visuals like really work well here um you know you know sonic looks fairly expressive uh he's he's got he's definitely got some great personality to him a lot more than other um cgi characters they throw into other films the compositing is actually really good in a lot of scenes the car chase is uh, is decently exciting i mean it, it has a few beats that we we kind of expect here and there um, but it but it looks good. I mean, a lot of the, the the robots they look fairly generic, but they they don't really stick out like sore thumbs in this kind of story. I will say this to the film's credit, I do I did appreciate what the film didn't do, which is it could have harped on a lot of easy humor here. It could have gone through a, for a lot of lowbrow jokes. Thankfully, it doesn't. There's only one fart joke, and it's mostly just a one-off because you know, Sonic eats chili dogs. I mean, what did you? You pretty much know a fart joke is coming at that point. Um, there's there's not really a lot of um, th there's not a lot of like musical sequences. There's not a, th th I don't think there's any musical sequence. There's sequences where like Sonic uh, does his whole bit to music, but there's no sequences where he sings along with music or does any goofy dances. He does a little bit of the the Fortnite flossing, just a little bit though, not to the point where it becomes aggravated. Where Sonic's in like, look, kids, I'm I'm hip with you. See, kids today, they they dig Sonic, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> There's nothing quite like that, thankfully. Um, so it's it's fairly passable comedy here. But like I said, it hits so many beats that you see coming like a mile away. In particular, um, there's a scene during the bar brawl, which essentially, they essentially do the whole Sonic stops time with the super speed and tries to save everyone during a bar brawl. So essentially the... Um, uh, you know, the, the stopping time bit from, like, the X-Men films, it's pretty much the same deal here with Sonic. Uh, we kind of see that coming. The action is, uh, it, it's competent. Like, it, it, it looks good. Um, I, I like the way it looks, but there's rarely a moment that has a lot of intensity or excitement to it. The, the one scene I feel that does have a little bit of intensity, and it's kind of played off for a joke, is a scene where there's there's a bomb that they can't quite get off of them. Like, it keeps attaching to themselves. It's good for some comedy. But again, nothing really that intense here. Which, I guess, to the film's credit, is fine. I mean, for, for kids, I think kids, kids will like it. You know, there's enough goofy humor here. Sonic's a likable enough character. Pretty much everyone in this film is likable. That's, that's the... I think that's the best thing I can say about this film. Everyone in this film... From Jim Carrey, who's a fairly simplistic villain, to Sonic, who's just like, you know, the the smart aleck, uh, you know, smart mouth hero. Pretty much everyone is likable. There's not a single person here you don't even like that much. Even even Tom's wife's sister, who wants Tom to divorce his sister, never really feels unlikable because she's mostly just there for jokes. Pretty much everyone here is is for jokes. Which I guess is is fine. I just wish that the, the, the jokes packed a little bit more of a knowing and refer, referential punch. Um, it kind of feels like just like, a, like the, the, these are jokes that are, are, I think, are best suited for kids. Kid, There are a lot of jokes here that are not going to fly over the heads of kids here. Um, so I think kids are really going to enjoy this film the most. Adults, adults I think, well, uh, you know, it depends on like your nostalgia for Sonic. I mean, I, I grew up playing the Sonic games, but even I'm kind of like, eh, there's... Not a whole lot else here for me. I mean, yeah, I, I remember the the games and the the super speed and when he rolls into a ball and the the whole deal with Mobius and and the brief mention of Tails and stuff like that and Robotnik. Yeah, I I, I, I know all this stuff. Um, but like, there, there's no real like standout moments of humor here. I smiled a lot during these sequences and it's got its decent charms here and there. But there was never a moment where I where I flat out laughed. I came close to. There's a great bit where um. Uh, where where James Marsden and Jim Carrey are basically kind of having a showdown of, you know, like, talking up, like, you know, how much they know about their respective careers. And it essentially devolves into Robotnik um, talking about how he was an orphan and how, <laughs> and how James Marsden kind of rubs it in his face, which I thought was kind of funny. 
a decent bit. Um, but there's no real like standout moments here. There's nothing that I'm really going to be racing back here towards, or even that I'm really gunning for a sequel towards. Uh, yeah, th there's th there's there's not a lot here that I that I'm gonna really come back to, which is why I kind of find the film. It's I mean it's it's fairly fast. It runs about 99 minutes, and it's breezy comedy. There's rarely a moment where I was bored with the film. But uh, but I get the feeling it's just going to be fairly a fairly forgettable film. Like you know, there's there's no real standout moments here that I'm gonna you know gonna come racing back towards. Um, so it's a it's a sufficient adventure road trip comedy. It's got some decent jokes here and there. It never aggravates or annoys with other films of this type of genre, like uh, like Smurfs or Hop or you know take your pick of any of those types of films it it avoids a lot of those pitfalls but it just feels like it spends more time avoiding these traps than it does actually you know building up like a better film so yeah it's it's a sufficient video game film which i know for a lot of people who have suffered through a lot of video game movies that have just kind of just crashed and burned um this is gonna be this is gonna be seen as a triumph um i just think that uh, with this with this material and such likable characters i feel like you can do just a little bit more. Just a little bit more to make me feel something for Sonic. Maybe punch up the jokes a little bit more. I felt like there's just there's just a little bit more I could have done. And it could have been a great film instead of just a passable film. Uh, so, for Sonic the Hedgehog, two and a half out of five stars.